Hello UK Nation, my name is Matiz and today I will be showing you everything you need to know about the 3090 FE water block. From the disassembly of the 3090 FE GPU to step-by-step -step installation of the 3090 FE water block. The video is timestamped so you can skip right away to the part that interests you the most. Also, do not forget to contact our renowned support anytime you need it or have a question. Start by checking box content and inspect the product condition. Find the instruction manual online and compare the content. In the instruction manual, we can conveniently find the basic dimensions of the block. There is also a breakdown picture of the block in its components and basic technical specifications. EK Quantum Vector FE RTX 3090 block comes with DRGB LED strips with 24 LEDs in total. It is a standard 3-pin cable and the LEDs are 5 volts. Make sure to plug it into the appropriate header with the appropriate voltage. LED strip is smartly routed so it lights up the terminal and the internals of the block. In the next step, we will need to disassemble the stock 3090 FE cooler. For that we will need the following tools. Before we start, make sure to properly deal with the static electricity so no harm comes to the GPU components. First we need to lift these four magnetic covers with tape. Make sure not to scratch the surface. Gently lift the pieces and start from this side. Next, we need to lift this center piece with something sharp. This part is a bit difficult sometimes. Unscrew these 8 bolts. For these four, we will need a Phillips bit. And for the rest, we will need the T5 bit. And lastly, we will need to remove the SLI cover. Slowly lift the back plate. And keep in mind, the original thermal pads can be quite sticky. So this doesn't always come off as easy. We recommend putting original thermal pads back on the back plate for safe storage. Also make sure that these two rubber pieces that hold the static piece in place are still there. Next, we need to remove the IO shield. Start by unscrewing this top screw and then proceed to unscrew the rest six over here. Remove the four screws holding the clamping mechanism around the die. Make sure to unscrew them in a cross pattern, but only halfway so we don't damage the die. After the screws are loosened halfway, press down on the clamping mechanism and go for the rest. Hold down the clamping mechanism, especially for the last two screws, as there is tension. Remove three cables attached to the PCB. Start by lifting the black tab at the back of the clamp and gently pull on the cable to remove it from its slot. We do the same for the second one. Lift it up and gently pull it out. Now the third one is a bit different. Slide the silver metal clamp to the back side by pressing gently on the middle of it, like this. And then we slowly need to lift the cable. Don't pull it, lift it. Like this. Now we are ready to remove the PCB from the cooler. Slowly and gently lift it up. Remember, the original thermal pads are a bit sticky and they work as a strong adhesive. As with the backplate, we recommend to arrange the thermal pads back on the cooler in its original position. 
that way they can be safely stored. Also, the entire cooler can be assembled back in reverse order and stored. This way all the screws and mounting material will be in its original place. To prepare the GPU's PCB for the block to be mounted, we will need something to clean the thermal paste off the die, like cotton swaps and cleaning alcohol. Then include the thermal pads and scissors will be needed. Wipe off the remains of the original thermal compound using a non-abrasive cloth or a Q-tip until the components and the circuit board are completely clean. Your 3090 FE water block comes with thermal pads that have to be cut into smaller pieces to cover all the PCB components that require liquid cooling. You must remove the protective foil from both sides of the thermal pad before installation. Once cut to size, thermal pads should be placed on the PCB as illustrated in the installation manual. EK made sure to provide you with more than an adequate quantity of thermal pads to complete this step. One side of the thermal pads is stickier than the other, we recommend to put the sticky side on the PCB for ease of assembly. It's the light blue one. In the end, it should look like this. Make sure there is no overhang of the thermal pads. Next, we need to apply the enclosed thermal grease. The excessive or uneven application of thermal paste may lead to poor performance. We will show you how to mount the block to the already prepared GPU PCB. For that we will need the Phillips head screwdriver, 2mm Allen key and the bag with universal mounting mechanism. Please note you may not need every screw in this package. Let's start with the block disassembly, as it arrives in the package loosely assembled. Carefully unscrew the three pre-installed backplate cover screws using the enclosed 2mm Allen key and take off the backplate cover. Save the screws and cover for later. After we've dealt with the three screws on the backplate cover, we need to remove it. Next, we need a Phillips head screwdriver in order to remove the remaining four screws. When we remove the last screw, we can safely remove the backplate and proceed with the installation of the block. Now remember, save the screws and the backplate and the backplate cover for later as we will need it for installation of the block. Next order of business, we need to remove the I.O. bracket. Again, we need the Phillips head screwdriver in order to remove the three screws. Carefully press down on the I.O. bracket so it doesn't move and scratch the block upon removing the final screw. As the block is really heavy and to avoid potential damage, we will place the PCB onto the block instead of the other way around. First, carefully turn the PCB with pre-installed thermal pads upside down to check if they stay in place. As one side of the thermal pads is sticky and if placed with that side on the PCB components, they should stay there for this step. Position the water block on the table and lay the PCB on it. Easiest is to start with this side, where you align the corners to these two notches and lay it down. And just like this, the PCB should slide right in. During this process, make sure you have aligned mounting holes of the PCB with holes of the water block. For this next step, we will need the four smaller screws and the four PVC washers placed on the PCB, like you can see in the video. Next, we will need to screw in set screws in a cross pattern. Remember, don't screw them in all the way at first. Go step by step. Now, once the screws are halfway in, tighten them in a cross pattern. This ensures a proper contact between the GPU die and the block. Take the stored three screws and the I.O. bracket and attach them onto the water block. Screw will also be needed to fix the I.O. bracket on top. EK made sure to provide you with more than an adequate quantity of thermal pads to complete this. You must remove protective foil from both sides of the thermal pad before installation. Once cut to size, thermal pads should be placed on the backplate as shown in the installation manual image. Make sure to cut them precisely 
and that there is no overhang. The brighter side of the thermal pad is stickier than the other. We recommend to put the sticky side on the PCB for the ease of assembly. In the end, the card should look like this. Apply three small pea-sized dots of enclosed thermal grease on the water block as shown in the image. This ensures that the back plate will have a perfect contact with the water block and as such give better cooling to back components. Place the back plate on the PCB and make sure all the holes are aligned. Insert the remaining four screws and tighten them evenly. After securing the backplate, place the backplate cover onto the cart and make sure all the holes are aligned. Place in the remaining three screws in each of the three mounting holes and tighten them evenly. Assembly is now complete and the GPU can be put into the loop. Also, do not forget to contact our renowned support anytime you need it or have a question. Check if the GPU is functioning properly before installing the UK water block to it. Depending on your desired loop configuration, you might want to swap the terminal from straight through to pass through. Swapping the terminal is easy. Unscrew the three screws with the enclosed 2.5mm Allen key. Remove the stock terminal and save the screws and terminal o-rings for later. Before attaching the new terminal, make sure the terminal o-rings are placed inside the holes on the cold plate. Carefully place the terminal on the cold plate and secure it with previously saved screws. Do not use excessive force when tightening the screws. Make sure to test the block for leaks and proper assembly before putting it back into the loop. For that, we recommend using our EK leak tester. Please note that the water block should be tested at 0.6 bar for 15 minutes. When you get your EK water block, please check if everything is included in the box. Check that the LEDs are working with the DRGB header on your motherboard before installing them to the GPU. Press the thermal pads onto the components with your fingers to attach them properly. You can check if your GPU is compatible with our water blocks under the compatibility list tab on our website. Keep the stock cooler in case a RMA is needed. The back plate in the matching color is sold separately. It's as simple as that. The EK Quantum Vector FE RTX 3090 block is installed. Stay tuned for upcoming how-to videos. Like, share, subscribe and stay cool! Damn, this active backplate looks nice. Can we show this? No, no, no!